So how do I deal with frustration? I don't know. Is that frustration? Oh yeah, I make a review and tell you what's good. Oh, what's not good? Excuse me. Now I'm setting up for Flutzi. Which of course poses the question. I'm sorry, I'm carrying the cat. I like it really nice. But she needs me, so I cannot put her away right now. Because I've been spending so many hours not with her. Oh, she more important. I'm setting up the flute. Today is day 50 and yesterday was 49. And it was the first day I did not play the flute. And that's perfectly all right. Honestly, it probably was long due. When I studied singing, I mean, seriously singing, there I I actually definitely would not sing one day a week. I think it's like athletes, I, at least, I mean, strong athletes, you need to have the body repose. And then there's something else to it. I mean, give me some chance, I'm gonna set up now. And the other thing what is there to it is that, well, at least in singing, I can tell you by experience that the, there is complicated concepts that you probably don't even get. The, the singing concepts that are really hard to understand because it's not something which you can learn in theory and be done with it. It's the opposite. Maybe they help you with the theory, but it is that you apply it and the voice is probably not even ready to apply it until like maybe five years later or maybe three years later. But you have to work your way toward it so you would get there. That's opera singing. So the teacher, when he's great, which mine was, and there are different types of teachers, but the teacher who helped me bring out my voice, who had been staying actually the longest ever because it takes so many years. He told me that he was giving me these images and he would give images to all of his students. He was always had plenty of students that would even come from Europe to Mexico. I studied in Mexico to have their voice checked with him because I really trusted him. He was a really good, good, good person and a good teacher. He was an amazingly good person, an old guy, very sweet. Very cool. What was his sign? Aquarius. <laughs> was it now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have this thing. I kept like people's birthdays in my head. <laughs> Aquarius. Very sweet. Yeah, but my name he wanted to kind of... He was so overwhelmed with my... I don't want to say it. Beauty. He wanted to touch my face. I had the feeling it was like, oh, I couldn't handle it anymore. That was weird. No, super respectful. Super nice. So he said he would give all these images. So he would see what works with each of the students, which was really nice. I, what I did, I had my little bookie, my booklet, and I would write every time. I mean, every time I would have a lesson, I would write down and I would write down everything he told me. I would also record it, but I would read in a tape recorder. Oh, yeah, <laughs> tape recorder. Remember those? No, don't worry. You haven't missed anything at all. <laughs> anything at all. And the brain needs the space to adjust. I don't know if you noticed it, like how many branches right popped out of my head. I do. Yes, yeah, see, it's like I haven't finished the sentence in the beginning, but I'm doing it right now. I have it all in my head. <laughs> it's always there. Unless I'm going to be distracted. So the situation is that the brain needs time. And it is often super convenient, even more convenient, to not continue practicing the days and days on end, but actually give it a moment. And you will be surprised often. Of course, you have to be to, in a certain advancement. And you also have to make clear that whenever you look at the teacher or your study, when you are a good student, that means that you pay plenty of attention to anything you learn. And then the brain will process it and needs it a little longer. Our consciousness is so fast, much faster because our consciousness... Okay, let me finish this thoughts first. Then after a few days, or after maybe you leave it there, you go back suddenly boom it's like a aha moment it clicked in like a big light and you and your body capitalized or accepted the information given to you and suddenly you can do it so in any discipline i i suggest you have a day rest i i'm in no way i'd like wanted to like propose oh no there's not one day rest no i have barely in my view i've barely done anything with the flu I'm a bubble, as I said, a little bit. I would play so much more. I talk so much. I have little time. But that's okay. And that's why I could do even more. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible. Like an athlete, I don't think... Even though he says, I, on day I do chess, the other do legs. I don't even know if that works this way. I have a doubt. I wouldn't. <laughs> if I would be an athlete, especially not a dancer, you have to do everything. Like all the time. Maybe a different type of chess and a different type of leg. You know, that. But that, that seems like almost too boring to us <laughs> anyway so <clears throat> even then you, you may one part you rest and then you do another part and then you pick it up again and that's good the body needs that so 
Yes, that's what my suggestion is. And I'm setting up the flute. So nice. I studied singing in Mexico. I sang in Germany. And in these choirs, well, everything was kind of included. It's like in package, right? You went there, you had no idea. No one had. Like, no one. No idea. Like, zero idea. And then you suddenly were sitting with other people on a chair and there was someone in front and they would say, okay, let's do this. And then he would start the breathing exercises that would last like a few minutes. And then it would start warming up exercises. You just follow everyone. And that would start. And the whole thing would take like 10 minutes every time because of warm up. And these are excellent exercises, I have to say. I, I, I even kept them for my singing later, especially the breathing ones. But I always discern. And then we would do, you know, section by section. And, you know, after a very short while, I'd say, because of the level of professionalism, we would actually be able to do a concert. A bunch of people up to like 60 who had no clue about singing. I love that. But that was then. Oh, I, I, I never thought I had a good voice. <laughs> That's also very interesting. I never thought I could sing. I mean, I did sing, but I sang because, well, it had to be done. I played the guitar and sang Let It Be and House of the Rising Sun and stuff like that. But um, it was my colleagues, these two women who were sitting next to me um, in the choir, who told me when he was looking for a soloist, they said, you, Zilke, you go. I said, no, come on. Said, you go, 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 go audition for soloist. I was like, strange. And I still today think I wasn't really singing nice. Like that, out of nowhere. I, I, okay, I have to say, I probably have the, I can't, it's really hard to say these things for myself. So I have like the largest voice on earth, the most capacity, and not only because I'm so smart, I look at it, because I have the instrument. I have like, not a regular flute, I have like a super large flute. Now, we have those often with our DNA, if you're strong in the body. And we also are, that's a, that's a Spanish term, where we, we look younger, usually, because all from Rothschild and my teacher was one too, which I didn't know, of course, I, did, I had no idea. I look very young. And <laughs> no, okay, never mind. I, I, see, this is what I'm not, that's too much of a, of a branching out right now. Okay, I just continue. So my teacher, he said that he met someone, who, his teacher was someone who I actually studied with Enrico Caruso. That's like the only person on earth which I would look up to. Not because someone said it was he was the greatest tenor of all times, but in that he had the largest voice. He said so. Caruso had a very large voice, he said. Now, little I knew because he, that he actually, his teacher was not someone who taught Caruso per se. He, it was Caruso. Because of the persecution of our talents of Van Rothschild, that was just before the World War, he came... He went from, you know, to, and then he came to Mexico and he hid his identity. Uh, officially he died, I don't know, you look it up, I forgot right now. But it doesn't mean anything. He was young and so he taught my, my teacher everything he knew about it. And he said, told my teacher that he had met Caruso and then the whole story. And that is that, and usually like a Mozart, okay, in the opera, like different types of voices. I usually just pin it down to actually two types, which is the very light one and the very heavy one. And there's something in between, most of them are. And when the voice is light and thin, you cannot do much. You can only do like small tired and simple things, which are for the heavy voice is almost impossible. And I have to say it again. I'm really hurt. I, hurt. I have to say it. I can do everything because I'm like so sorry. <laughs> because I'm sensitive. So that means I can do, I can do what no one can. I can do all of the styles. And they will always tell you, now you, you can all, all this, all the heart, and then you, and, and among this, you only can do this and not that. I mean, like, if there's 500 pieces of opera, I should be doing one, and I can do all of them. I mean, literally, I can do every single one. And I'm grateful I studied with this teacher because he, he showed me, also Caruso. He too, he, he was, he said that he was actually, someone fired him from a choir, Caruso, when he was a teenager or so, because he was, wasn't singing right. The thing is, it takes, it's like, it's like a lion, the voice. It takes, tomarlo, how you say this? In to, to train the voice, it takes longer. A, a thin voice takes four years, five, 
to be able to go on stage. And our voice takes eight years at least, and mine even more. Eight years of vocalizing and no singing. Because it takes so much to... It's like it's like hidden gem inside. Every all, all, every voice has that, and you can train any voice on earth. You can try, and anybody can do that. Anybody can train, and it will come out in a different way because that's the time it takes. It's, it's, I don't know what it is. I can't. It's not like building a house because the house, you, but something. But what is important is, and that's like for me the most important part is that you have to know where, where to look at and how to focus on things. And you don't understand anything for years on end when you sing. So a teacher is actually important. Or listen to what needs to be said, and which I always did when I have a few moments with people who took a few lessons with me. I sent them on their way. So that was a good thing to know. And I always felt very identified with when he said Caruso. I don't know. I'm not into stardom. Just don't walk there, Minzi. But I felt like, I felt almost like, I don't know, I actually felt like I was like with them. It's kind of weird. <laughs> Always did. I, I don't talk about those things. I just felt so. Uh, also, certainly my teacher also said that I had like, you know, spinto. He said that very soon. That means I can do what do the soprano, what does the mezzo soprano. I can do both. Yep. So... Um, here's something else. Okay, let's pause for a moment. <laughs> 